Anything? Yes, please. Since I'm looking back at the videos from, I guess all of them really, um, where should your eyes be during these exercises? Because it seems like most of the time you're not even really looking at the person or their chest, but it's just... Yeah, you know, in that book that we were, uh, we, we have had as our required reading, uh, he gives you the traditional Chinese, which is the traditional martial arts, um, you know, conventions for when's the best time to to go to your master, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, that made total sense to me. I, I have conveyed to you several times that um, uh, many of my masters were, you know, the, the, the more sophisticated their art was, the, the board was beyond my comprehension. They, they seemed crazy, right? And I have talked to you a lot where, yeah, I could feel that, I could feel that. Um, you know, I, I tend to just think of, of that kind of Mahayana Bodhisattva concept of somebody who hangs out long enough to help other people, but at a certain point, your hanging out is just is limiting you and so what the conventional wisdom is is that you, you at a certain point your master is done teaching and they are they are now on to their own studies and and you you can't they got nothing to show you that you could grasp so and um so i think that's one of those things that you've seen in me when you know my eyes are going up, I, I tend I tend to look up a lot, like uh, because I when I when I feel the art, um, it's more like something inside of something inside of me. It's it's more of a feeling, uh, the, very much like when I um, when I when I try to teach you guys in, in the marksmanship to, to reach that kind of robot feeling and you're just in that zone, like that mind is the same mind of Zazen, but mind doesn't explain it for us Westerners because mind for us is brain. It's a feeling, I feel it somewhere around here. You know, so what do you, what do you chest, diaphragm, torso area? Right, I, I tend to feel it like right there, um, and it has this kind of expanding, expansion-like sense to it, and so my eyes kind of are starting to follow, to follow it, and it's not, it's not necessarily uh, what you guys should be doing. Um, so you got to watch what's happening in light of those Chinese conventions. But beginner-wise, right, your eyes should be on, on your partner, okay? Um, that mind, that the position and the placing of your eyes on your partner, uh, generally in a place where you can see head to toe, uh, is going to stop your monkey minding. Do you get it? So you can control the mind by aiming the eyes, so to speak. Especially for short durations, the, the one to two seconds of a technique and, and um, zanshin at the end. So you use it like that. Um, but again, that's a beginner technique. So the beginner, what, what did I just tell you? Why do you have to do that? To, to calm the yeah to get the monkey mind under control, so you kind of think of it like you know, um, Takuhan talks about this. So the Zen monk, 17th century Zen monk, and he talks about there's people who will do their Buddhism and they talk about you know you have your mind is like a wild cat or a wild monkey, and you're going to tether it, so you tie it to a stake, and now it can't go anywhere and. It, you can't get into trouble, doesn't eat your food, doesn't shit on your bed, right? And he's all, eh, it kind of works, but wouldn't you rather have a trained monkey, <laughs> right? 
who won't eat your food and doesn't shit in your bed. So he, they, he, he draws that analysis that, that that's a beginner mind training. Advanced mind training doesn't have, a, doesn't have that wild uh, monkey mind, right? Not jumping all over from thing to thing. So that's kind of what you're, you're seeing. And when I, my, my, my mind just, I don't have you. I don't, you're not my opponent. It's more my, my self-perception of correct application is that feeling. Like you can biomechanically identify it, but it will always, it feels wrong to me if I don't have that feeling. Just like I've had some shots, like I've taken a shot and uh, I could tell I didn't have that feeling and I broke the shot and I, I go, you're gonna miss because I didn't have the feeling hit right in the bullseye, right? I, I don't go, I guess that feeling is not important. I go, lucky motherfucker. That, that's how it is to me. So I'm more interested in that, that feeling of all the years of reps and training and practice has developed a particular feeling that's telling me this is the proper organization timing, right? And so um, where do I look to see that? Do you, do you understand? I can't, it's not visible. So doesn't it make sense that I'm looking everywhere simultaneously? Yes, that makes sense. It's not all that different really from focusing on your uke at the beginner level, right? So at the beginner level, if you remember when we teach the back break balls, we have you focus on the wall. And the wall is your point of reference. And as you get, as you, uh, get higher up, you're now focusing on your uke, and then as you get higher up, uh, your gaze is not important. Your gaze is not important. Um, it won't pull your head and compromise your posture like it will in a beginner, right? Um, and then at that point, then that feeling is probably the most important. So I, I the reason I mentioned those Chinese conventions is. Uh, uh, I was very aware of my teachers, you know, being on the fringe of, of um, you know, of my, my culture. Because my, my wife didn't really train, and I could watch her freak the F out by these crazy people, right? And, then, and, and I enough, have enough awareness where I could tell like uh, it's very easy now nowadays to to go. This is all shit. Right. Every all a lot of stuff feels very real to you, right? Not so much to other people that have kind of trained this this way. So we we talked about that earlier when when the people that I have found who have been self-reflective without a kind of organized training, they seem to have suffered a huge amount. But then I've seen other people that have suffered a huge amount and they didn't make it through. So even that can't be that accurate. But I've never seen somebody without the training who's self-reflective, but for they have suffered a lot in life. If you knew their life, you would go, holy cow. And what you have what do you see with them? They have, they are able to see a lot of the bullshit. So somebody who's, I used to have a friend in college. Oh, he's a, he's a, he was actually my student at that time. Dear, dear friend. Um, and I met him in college. Super funny, super smart, handsome beyond belief. He looked like a total model. And he wanted to do, um, train with me. And we just beat the crap out of each other back then. I didn't, I didn't do any of the stuff that we do now to address learning curves. It was like, I got 12, I only teach 12 people and we're gonna just beat each other. We didn't even have class times. Like, like we started, I think it was four, but there was no telling when it was gonna end. And it was just pound on each other. 
and he's out there broken this broken that and um, you know you get to know each other and then I found out he was homeless as a, as a boy he was homeless and his his um, him and his mom used to eat out of dumpsters and you just would never know right and then nowadays he's like a total uh, contract lawyer for huge firm in San Francisco, super well off. And he brought his wife here one time, if you, if, I don't know if any of you remember. He, him and his wife came. His wife started crying when, when she saw just the whole thing. I think she could tell where he got a lot of who he is, you know, and stuff. But he suffered a lot, and so he always had that he, we could sit there all day long, you know, midnight, 2 a.m. from a class and, and go on like that. Um, so I think at this level, I, near senpai should probably tell you, you know, hey, that's what, that's what sensei's doing, but you should do this. I try to still do that. I try it as much as possible, but if you give me a couple reps, I go into myself. And then, so stick to the basics, okay? Um, that could go for even like when I'm asking to get soft. I'm asking your technique to have more disappearing. I'm not asking your technique to disappear. You see that? Uh, I think it's been quite a mistake that people uh, watch these old man tapes of O-sensei and, and then they try to copy, you know, old man O-sensei, only they didn't do the 40, 50 years of pulling tree trunks out of the ground training, right? <laughs> you know, I think if you're really sincere about the path, you would do what they did, right? You wouldn't just jump to the end. So, and I think that's where the conventional wisdom of, those, of the Chinese martial arts comes from. And yeah, don't catch, don't catch that master at the end because you're not going to fucking get him. You'll be misled. You got to catch him, right? What they say, like in the 50s, I think it is. Woo, I'm right. <laughs> right? Because they start playing. They start playing like my teacher. They start playing with stuff. And I literally had to go. I had to go, man... I'll get to that later, right? It's interesting, but that's the problem, is it becomes intellectually stimulating, and that's not the training, do you see? You start playing, you start making these riddles out of these things, like how did that punch get that powerful? And now you're just doing a freaking cultivation drill, you're not, you're not fighting, do you get it? That's, that's what happens all the time. So stick to the stick to your basics, and I, I try to do as much as I can. Try to do that too. Okay. So like if I if I were you and I was and I, I I was your senpai and I see you start you know looking up to the fucking great beyond, I would go hey, put your chin down. You're gonna get it knocked the fuck off as a senpai, right? And you're going well sensei does it. Well, that's fucking sensei. Right? You do, you keep your fucking chin down. Right? That's what, that's what I would say as a simple. So I'm coming to. It's not doing anything for my posture. Anything else? Yes. Regarding the book, I know you say that you know, sometimes you might recommend something for you just based off one good paragraph or one good part. Yeah. And as I've been going through it, there have been some things where it's like, that doesn't seem like what Sensei does, and there are other parts that leap out like, yeah, okay, I've heard that before. Yeah. I'm curious, what what in this book, because I, I don't want to mistake the two, what, what in this book stands out to you in particular? Well, this is one of those things where I tell you not, I don't want you to follow me at the end. I want you to go through the journey. So my journey was 12 years of, you know, uh, academic 
study at some of the highest level in the world for this kind of thinking. You, you can't just, if you just repeat what I said, that's not at all what I teach. So you have to read these books. So I, I look for books that aren't too expensive, that aren't too long, that do surveys and summarize without being so general that they're just wrong, okay? And it's not that, it's, that this book is wrong, but it's not the end all. It's just part of your journey. So I guess what I would take from this book, and I think you should do this every time if you are a deshi with a mentor, is you, you know what is different? Because what is different is your teacher consciously chose not to do that. If you can't, if you if you don't have in your mind that your teacher is capable of consciously choosing something, is that if they just through their own institutional inertia, you know, ended up where they ended up. Man, don't, that's not a mentor. That, leave that fucker. Okay. I can tell you every reason why I don't do what they do. So, a couple things I think in that book is, you, you have a very good, um, description of, of uh, yin yang philosophy that's very good in that book as as a kind of you know I don't I don't have 12 years to do a doctorate degree in this I just give it to me and it's a good place <clears throat> I also think it's important to show it's a good book on showing how deeply <clears throat> you can take this where everything is correlated every aspect from you know we kind of just stick to uh, these very uh, large categories of you know fitness sleep management um, worldview that that kind of stuff but oh man right how do you what haircut do you have and when what do you what should you smell when you're menstruating and you know it's like it, it goes on and on that's how that is the culture out of which the idea of the martial arts as a technology of self arose okay so if that's the case then then how far are we away from that when our martial arts training is like fitness or socializing or, or even self-defense. Do you see that? It really makes no sense to, to think of this like that. And there's no, it, it's a historical warping when the arts have become that. And it's a mixture of just really, not a mix, it's just ignorant. People don't know. They don't know. There's, when you when you join a normal dojo, they don't they don't assign reading, right? They don't no. Are you kidding me? You're lucky if they show up. Now you want me to read? You want me to read outside? Fuck that. I got school. Right. I don't know if you've paid attention, somewhere in between the books that I require reading, there's about five more recommended reading. Those are just the ones I'm recommending, right? If you are smart, you go, okay, well, uh, how many is he actually reading? Okay, so what, where should you be? So that, that book kind of tells you, wow, holy cow. Everything, everything. It's those lists are just insane, right? The herbal combinations, the 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 the, the time of the the hours, 
of the day, the seasons, everything. You know. Uh, I then the next thing is well then why aren't why don't you do it? I think that um, it's kind of like. How I said when you come to those masters that are, are, are working at their own level that is so hard to digest that they become intellectual curiosities and so you start to focus in on that as a riddle and you pay attention, you overemphasize the drills uh, such that you start working on projection. Okay, so you're gonna work on fudging. You're gonna work on your projection. You have all these projection drills. You don't know the fucking first thing about fighting. Somewhere in your head, you thought that guy was gonna come in and you were gonna project him out, right? Only he throws a jab, right? <laughs> jab rear cross, left hook, boom, you're knocked out. And you ain't projecting shit. You get it? So, because it was just a drill. It was not the fighting. So in the same way, when you have all of these governances of like the hours and the diet and everything like that, that's how I understand them. What are they really trying to do? Well, you have had several answers to that, but I think they, in, in the Taoist tradition, they really come down to two. And one is, and it's mentioned in the book, is uh, physical immortality. Okay. And then the other one is this kind of sage, holy, holy man. Not at all that different from, you know, <coughs> saint or the Buddha you get it so I looked at those two and I said like fucking really I want to fucking live forever really is that really the height of my fucking existence I don't know I think you gotta be a real idiot to to want to live for forever It's just, that's my, I, I ran through it. I ran, you know, I ran through the philosophical argument. Wait, let me get this straight. So all this suffering and bullshit and the fucking crap forever? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. Right? Or I could do this other thing. Right? Where I'm not subject to it. And I'm not someone who passes it from me to another person. To me, that, that person, even if you can do it for a moment, is better than someone who lives for forever and can never do it. So that's why I just... And that is really in there. That is really a part of uh, Taoism and Chinese arts. But to me it wasn't, it's just not important. So, uh, you know, I might come across this dude and he might go, you need to drink this tea and stare in this direction and circumnavigate this thing. And, it, and I go, man, you're a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? If I do all that, I'm just like you. I don't. I don't want it. So that's why we don't do it. But I like the point that man. It does show. It can't be exercise, socialization, or self-defense. That can't can't be that. You just can't do that. That is not the way. That's not a way. That's a hobby. Hobbies don't do anything for us. 
There's no technology of the self in a hobby, right? We're never going to break out the Rydell aircraft carriers. And <laughs> you remember those bottle kits? <laughs> Don't smell the glue too long. Cap it. <laughs> it's not going to do anything for you. Your fears are not being reconciled, and they're not being brought to the surface. What's the worst thing? Damn, I glued the wrong piece. The glue dried. It's not, it's not going to do it. So what we, what we end up doing is, is geared more towards the sage life. So if I'm interested, for example, in the dietary prescriptions of any kind, I'm interested in it only in terms of these other things that we have highlighted. So like, is it allowing your fitness to be at a level where you can train at a level where you are practicing self-cultivation? Or are you too weak? Are you too frail? Do you have not enough muscle on your frame? It's one thing to do the art and to not have use muscle, but you're dreaming if you're going to train four to six hours a day and you're going to be, you know, Mr. Veal. You know Veal? No, you can't do anything like that. So, we're interested in the diet that way. We're interested in the diet in the way that is this, is this making me more triggered? Is my nutrition uh, predisposing me towards anxiety and depression? Do you see? That, that's, we're interested in that. I'm not interested in is this tea going to give me 10 more years of life? I don't give a fuck. Do you see that? So we, we've kind of veered away. And he, he, in the book, he tries to say that the immortal side, you know, that they saw bullshit. He's, that, that part's not true. The, the, uh, the, the health and wellness in terms of longevity is by far much more popular than the sage-like thing. The sage aspect of Taoism is popular in philosophical circles in um, first world countries who are dying. But as far as every, all that other, man, you, you can't go anywhere without that stuff. How, how, how Chinese were you raised, would you uh, say? I'm not sure. I can answer that question very well simply, uh -huh. but my parents do talk about a lot of the health aspects that this book also talks about. Yeah. Um, and when they heard about the low-carb diet, they were like, no, no, you can't do that. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's interesting. And then, like, how many times did you have philosophical debates on the, uh, on the Lao Tzu? No. I, I don't remember anything like See. that. It, it's like that every, everywhere you go. Um, yeah, they're like, I don't, need to, I, don't need, I don't need to fucking understand the Tao Te Ching. I just got to fucking drink these teas and sleep this way and sleep on that side and, you know, not have sex on this day and <laughs> fucking, I'm fucking cold. I just, you might decide otherwise. I'm just, it's just my path. I think that's a waste of time. That's not, not a, a travesty to me. It's not a failure. Do you know what I mean? It's not a failure I have to avoid. To me, the failure is I'm alive and I'm an asshole. That's a failure. So I, I will acknowledge there's some chapters in there where I'm sitting there. Going, <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness I'm not doing that, but... So I, I guess if you're asking me, yeah, don't, you know, I don't pay attention to all those chapters. You might want to, you know. Maybe you have an ailment and you've tried everything and, hey, try it. might work, right? I mean, just my aim is different. But I don't, not really denouncing it. It's just not my, my orientation. But if you know if you if you're reading it and you deciding 
Yeah, I, I get what that that chapter. Hey, skip it. Go to the next chapter, right? Let let the next chapter speak to you, if you want. Don't don't hold yourself. We've talked about that before, right? Don't. I told you I don't read the introductions anymore. I don't I don't remember who I don't memorize the authors anymore. Those are things for academics. So this is chapter one, right? And I get halfway through. This book is total shit. I'm done. Because I used to go, you must finish it. <laughs> you must, right? But I don't. I don't have. There's not a book report. It's like this is the biggest piece of boringest shit. Put it away. Okay. So you 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 are in a kind of class. You've been required to read it. But hey, fucking, you know, I get it. T. <laughs> Got it. Go. Get to the next. Get to the next chapter. Because in this book, it's divided up like that. So he, he's going to go through all the different kinds of you know teas and meditation. Then he'll do a yin yang thing or a you know zazen kind of thing. He'll go like that. So you get the idea. Hey, go get through it. Any one more thing, anyone? Anything else on the book? I know the book, yeah. <laughs> Something listening to the audio book when he goes to that section where in the paperback there's bought like pictures and yeah. movements and he's just like describing the way the body's moving in the audio book. I did that. Yeah. I did that thing. Yeah. I was like, I yeah. can't listen to this chapter. Yeah. 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 It but it it goes to show you some that we have mentioned here how these patterns, mm -hmm. the patterns of these movements are ancient and that they um, clearly had other, other uh, motivations and reasonings, uh, reasoning behind them other than this is what you do for a wrist lock. Do you get that? And so um, one that I don't think you should do away with is that they by moving in the right way, you are developing the body for the art. Okay, so let's just take what we might want to call strength and power. Right? If you don't follow the right curves, I don't think you generate the right kind of stress on the body so that you then don't de generate the right kind of adaptation. Okay, so if you if you're moving just your arms, for example, yeah, your deltoids and biceps might get some strengthening to them, but you're not going to develop that that overall power that we want. So when I see a lot of Aikidoka, you know, on videos from all around the world, that's what stands out to me is holy cow, you guys are frail, mushy people. Right? And he mentions it in there. Um, when he talks about uh, this one master had a student and the student kind of focused in just on the philosophy and he noticed the difference. This guy was mushy. He has had rounded shoulders, right? If you haven't gotten to that part. And I, I think, uh, you know, what I would take from that chapter is I wouldn't necessarily go, okay, what movement is he doing, and then try to duplicate it. Uh, you can't learn that from a book. You need a master for that, right? Uh, but I would take the idea that, yeah, these are not free-for-alls, okay? I can't just manipulate the wrist any old way I want to. There's something else I'm working on that, that I have to be doing. So, um, you know, you still have, the, you guys all have the question before you is how can you find the power that you're seeing? Right? Because at first glance it doesn't make sense. Which is why a lot of people dismiss it. So a lot of people will tell you, right? It doesn't look like he's throwing you that hard. And you're like, fucking get in there. Right? Right? Like even on yesterday on those videos. You, it, uh, if you just watch me, 
I'm barely moving. But if you watch how you fall, right? You, you need as a deshi, you gotta go, okay, that's not, you get, it's not a magic. It's not magic. It's not the force, right? And it's definitely not um, the art, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, just agree to start. And it's not gonna make you fucking kick ass, you know? It's like Aikido makes us all powerful. No, it doesn't. You have to train a certain way to find a certain kind of body cultivation, and then that gives you the power. You get it? So, yeah, I would take from that chapter, it's not a free-for-all, stop moving any old way you want. Stop doing that. Not, not just in terms of architectural viability, just in terms of body conditioning. Okay? We were doing some striking in the, uh, in the uh, kids class, the kids advanced class, right? And you can tell the difference when, when that thing hits. We're barely, barely touching, right? But uh, organized, conditioned body, not, not conditioned like, you know, CrossFit things, but this kind of Budo, uh, East Asian martial arts, body conditioning, that, that conditioning, uh, how do you get it? That's a riddle you have to figure out. And I think we would do ourselves a disservice when we don't start with, I should just do these patterns the way that they're taught to me. Maybe that's it. You know what I mean? Maybe that could be it. Rather than I keep making up crap, we lose things. Imagine if you did yoga, right? The, po the postures are so strict. If, you, if, you're, if you're training with a real yogi, oh man. Well, first of all, you don't do that many postures. But if you did, it's not a free-for-all. Right? I mean, what, what is the conventional wisdom? The hardest pose? Corpse. Corpse. Yes. You're like, you're shooting me! <laughs> I'll just lie down! <laughs> well, now, obviously that's not it, right? Otherwise, that wouldn't be the hardest pose. Right? Okay, so how much more so? This ancient body wisdom that's moving and that is dynamic. I gotta stop doing the free for all stuff. I'm missing out on things. All those things that he's listing that you went ahead and skipped over, <laughs> it's fine. Because you're not an academic if you just do this. But all those things he listed, yes, that's all right there. Totally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.